Hey guys and girls, this is Reed from the m &E Engineers. Today we're going to talk about IP ratings on the electrical equipment and how do you specify them given different scenarios. These standards apply for all electrical equipment such as sensors, panel boards, pumps, motors and other equipment we might use. We will then translate all this into a real life example for your understanding. Do stay tuned to the end of the video to get the tip of the day. First up, IP rating stands for ingress protection. This rating is used to define different levels of protection against intrusion of solids and liquids for an equipment. IEC 60529 is the standard that we use to determine the different level of IP rating. The IP rating comes in two digits representing two types of intrusion. The first number represents the ability to prevent intrusion from different sizes of foreign solids. The second number represents the ability to prevent intrusion from water. The higher the number, the more protected the equipment is. There are a total of 6 different levels for solids and 8 different levels for liquids. It is possible to mix and match all the numbers, example IP42 or IP56, depending on your site requirements. So let me quickly share with you how you can apply all the numbers effectively. If you look at the table, IP1X represents solid object, 50mm diameter or greater, will not be able to enter the electrical equipment. What are the examples of item that is above 50mm? It's the size of a human fist or a hand. Basically, this limits the hand from accidental touch on the electrical equipment due to the high voltage or current that might be potentially harmful to the human. However, a finger, which is smaller than the size of a fist, will still be able to enter the equipment. That's why we have the next IP rating. Usage for IP1X installations are usually in high position or in a location cordoned away from human reach. IP2X means object larger than 12mm in diameter and longer than 80mm will not be able to enter the equipment. Basically, we can call it finger proof. Usage for IP2X is usually in an environment where it is only accessible to train personnel, like an engine room or a switch room. IP3X means the installation blocks objects 2.5mm in diameter or greater, such as the screwdriver. Let us just call it toolproof. The usage of IP3X is quite similar to IP2X. IP4X means the installation is fully protected from foreign objects. It has an requirement of 1mm and greater. This limits even control wire from entering or coming out of the panel. When applied correctly, this eliminates the full possibility of an electrical shock if the doors are completely interlocked with the incoming power supply. The usage of IP4X is actually very common in low voltage panel making. It can be placed within the reach of trained or untrained personnel. Do take note that in case it is applied within the reach of untrained hands, it is recommended that no controls shall be in front of the panel in case of misoperations. Examples of such installations can be in shopping malls or residential applications. The next level brings ingression to a next level. IP5X prevents dust from entering the panel for at least 2 hours to a maximum of 8 hours. Usage of this can prevent short time exposure to fine dust in facilities such as blasting and powder coating, where operation lasts around that duration. IP6X simply means that the installation is completely dustproof. Its usage can be in hazardous location or harsh outdoor locations. IP6X is also the highest possible rating for solid ingression. The second digit for IP rating represents the ability to prevent water ingression. IPX0 simply means no protection. IPX1 means that the enclosure is protected from vertically falling droplets of water. Example of vertically falling droplets are condensation or even very very small leakage of water. Usage of these enclosures are recommended in electrical switch rooms without any pipes carrying fluid passing through it. The room should also not have any ventilation louvers near it in case of rain ingression. IPX2 protects the enclosure from water dropping 15 degrees from vertical. I like to call this raindrops prevention. Usage of the enclosure is similar to IPX1 but I would recommend this IP rating as a minimum for LB switch gears because to prevent water from coming in from 15 degrees, it comes with an additional canopy. IPX3 protects the enclosure from light spray of liquids 60 degrees from vertical. 
I like to call this broken pipes prevention. Usage of IPX3 enclosure enables more flexibility for the electrical rooms to have pipes running across them. This is because in case of a leaking pipe, the water might be sprayed around. So do take note from IPX1 to IPX3, the angles we are talking about are from verticals. It does not protect your enclosure from sprays coming from the bottom up direction. IPX4 protects the enclosure from water spray from all angles. From this point onwards, I do call this panel water resistant. Still not waterproof as yet. For the usage of IPX4, outdoor applications with a cover on top of the panel. Resistant to occasional water splashes at low pressure. IPX5 is simply an upgrade from IPX4. It protects the enclosure from low pressure jets from all angles. The panel is still only water resistant and still not waterproof. Usage are similar to IPX4, I would like to add that the panel is now water resistant to mist. Some fire sprinkler extinguisher actually utilize misted compound to extinguish the fire. Do take special note on those. IPX6 protects the enclosure from high pressure water jets from all angles. The usage of these are suitable for heavy duty such as ship decks or places where water jets are imminent. IPX7 allows the enclosure to have a brief immersion of water between 150mm to 1m deep. Do take note that the deeper you go, the more pressure will be applied to the enclosure. Hence, immersion duration is limited to 30 minutes. The application of IPX7 are common amongst watches where people actually swim with it. The next number, IPX8, is the highest number of water ingression protection. It means that the enclosure is now able to be immersed in water deeper than 1 meter for 2 to 8 hours max. Examples of application for such enclosures are underwater exploration equipments. IPX8 also has the flexibility to allow the supplier to test it to a certain depth or a certain duration. Now that you know all the numbers and what they represent, you can easily mix and match the numbers to your requirements. And also the IP charts are easily available on Google. Just Google IP rating. This comes to the most important part and the whole point of this video. Why don't I just specify or purchase IP68 every single time? The reason is cost. A higher IP rating usually means that the equipment will be more expensive. The increase in IP rating also lowers the ability for the equipment to dissipate heat because it is fully enclosed and there is no airflow. A good m &E engineer always balances cost and design requirement. So for your pro tip of the day, you may specify more than one IP rating for different application. My recommendation for electrical switch room is IP42 and for outdoor applications, IP65. These are the two most common IP rating for an electrical equipment. And of course, if your vendor were to give you a higher IP rating than you have specified at the same cost, then it's your gain. With this, we have come to the end of our video and I hope I have given you a good head start and explanation on IP ratings. Once again, if you find this video useful, please like and subscribe. If you need any advice on the IP rating you need to choose, please leave it in the comment section below. Bye-bye.